Hello and welcome to another video. Today we have a B450 Steel Legend from Azrock. This came to me for no boot. I was told that this board randomly shut down during use and never came back to life. So I'm going to unpack it and today is going to be a little bit different. I don't know what is wrong with it yet. Want to try to show you a little bit how I diagnose the board, how, how I go forward with that. So the first thing I would like to do is get some resistance measurements from, for example, the 12 volt socket on the top here. Let's go both ways. This looks good. Looks like nothing shorted. Then um, we're going to get a, a ground with one prop. For example, a screw hole or from the M.2 there's always a good connection. And then I go through the ports. The second one from the top, I think this is 12 volts. And this is probably 5 volts right here. No resistance, all looks good. And then 3.3 volts. Also looks good. Then I um, often start to checking at random. Like I uh, check, I see an inductor here. And I use this inductor to see. This resistance looks good. And there's another inductor right there. Also looks fine. There's inductors here for the memory phase. But I can't probe those right now because they are um, through hole with nothing visible on the top. But we're going to flip the board around in a moment and then we're going to see. This also looks good and for now I cannot see any more. Important is to also check around the SIO. Often I just use some capacitors around pin 1 to see. This also looks good. Just using um, random points of capacitors to see if there's anything shorted because I not do not yet have a schematic for this board and I don't know if I can get one. So I'm just checking by random. And so far this all looks good. The next thing I would also want to do is to check the voltage on the battery. Which you have 2.92. This could already be a problem because 2.9 is kind of low. Everything under 3. Um, in my experience can lead to problems. One more thing I want to do is I want to flip the board over right now and we're going to check the uh, coils that were close to the RAM so that are responsible for RAM. So we're going to take our probe again, going to get this ground here, going to probe the inductors at the top here for memory. Should go in resistance mode also. Looks normal. Also looks normal. Also looks normal. And one more thing that we can probe right here is that um, you see these capacitors. These are output capacitors for the CPU. And what I would want to try is to see if these have direct continuity from the 12 volts coming in on the top here to To our CPU and they do not. So the bot looks for the first view, it looks fine. I haven't made any visual inspection yet but it looks fairly clean, it was very well packaged. Next thing what I probably going to do is I'm going to build it up and we're going to see how the bot behaves because we did the most important thing, which is to check for any obvious shorts before we're going to power this board up. And next we go, what we're going to do is to build it up. And I will see you again when this board is all built up. So, right now we have one of the most important moments. We have our power supply attached to our 24 pin adapter. And look at the current now. And we're going to see how much current this board is going to take as soon as I connect it. And as you can see, we have 200 milliamps. The 
this board has a lot of LEDs well and these LEDs are flickering quite badly this looks awful <laughs> well okay so we got the board built up right now and now two two more important things I'm going to take a speaker and a power button and we're going to attach this so also we have our postcard in there and I'm going to see if I can find a way to connect our PCI postcard because you need a either TPM header or a debug port or something but this board has a TPM header and has the very first pin in the top right which means we need to connect it this way so we have a postcard installed right now and we also yeah I think we have everything we have a CPU cooler on here we have postcards we have our current draw and now for the first turn on and we're going to see what is going to happen okay 2.4 amps interesting postcodes are running amperage is changing AF hmm AF usually means post let's turn this off once more 4 amps that looked very healthy interesting um, we're going to put our nice little GPU in here that I use for posting I'm going to put it in and I'm going to add the the post screen for you um, yeah and let's try this just once more so you can see postcodes running right there the other postcodes that are up there you can see right now but it should be fine let's see the current is currently stuck and we get 55 on our DDR tester which we didn't had before and 55 as you can see right there means there's no RAM detected so let's do this again we're going to turn it off please turn it off holding the power button I turned off I'm going to turn off the power supply I'm going to reseed this RAM I'm just going to use a different slot and now we're going to do the whole thing again power supply is turned on I'm going to press the power button and now we have boot sequence again as you can see postcodes are running and we have AF so interesting we have how many beep codes is it going to repeat you're really not going to repeat that code for me are you hmm that's quite interesting that so far we have nothing and we seem to have something related to RAM the current looks very healthy though with 3.5 amps I would expect that this board is actually working one more thing I want to try is I'm going to remove that CMOS battery and we're going to see if that makes any difference because that is that was quite low with under 3 volts and um, sometimes memory issues are related to the BIOS so we're going to turn this board off and I'm going to quickly get out the BIOS battery and I will see you then so I got everything back together now and the BIOS battery is out as you can see I have it right here we're going to start the spot without a BIOS battery we're going to see what it's going to do amperage looks still very good above 3 amps postcodes are running we back to AF let's hear are there going to be any beeps from the main board 6 amps okay quite a lot in between that was five beeps I do not know what five beeps are for okay before we're going to try anything else I want to change out two things which is I want to get the RAM into the other channel right now the RAM is in the first slot 
the first and the second slot are together i want to move it to the third or fourth and what i also want to do is i want to move this graphics card to the lower pcie slot one moment please now we'll build up again let's try this one more time Amperage still looks good, still looks like the same. Post codes are running through. And now I had to move the PCIe card because we had no more space with the GPU in the lowest slot. Cooler is getting quite. Oh, we have picture. Oh, good to know. So, this bot actually works. Um. We need to find out what actually changed now. What actually was the thing. I'm going to try this again with the graphics card in the top slot and we're going to see if that changes anything. So we're going to turn it off. Please turn off board. Don't just restart like that. Turn it off. I'm going to take the power off. Now we're going to move the GPU because now we have a scenario where we need to decide okay or isolate rather to say it was this a ram related thing or was this a pcie related thing so we're now going to try if it works in the top slot it was a ram related thing and where then we're going to need to see what happened with the ram if we can get all four dims working maybe by just cleaning but we're going to see what will happen so we have the gpu moved into the top slot we're going to boot again this boot now should be fast because it knows the CPU, it knows where the RAM was. Postcodes are already at the point where they should be. 5 amps in between. Let's see and let's hear. And again 5 beeps, which probably means there's something with our PCIe slot not right. That's a very interesting thing. Um, what I'm going to try again, just to verify, we're going to turn this board off completely. Please turn off board. Now it's turned off. And what we're going to try now is we're going to put the, the card back into the lower slot. And we're going to put the RAM in one of the first slots. To confirm if the RAM slots are working and to see if it's actually the PCIe slot which brings us the problems. Back to turning on. Let's see, postcodes are running. We got AF, which means we should be posting. Interesting thing is the capture card picks up the signal even earlier than my TV does. So you on your screen always get the picture earlier than I do on my test screen right here and there's the picture so the RAM slots are good and we have to see what is up with our PCIe slot if you can see anything dodgy with it first thing I'm going to probably going to try is oh you know what I think this board is working because I accidentally used the wrong processor this is my 3500x which has uh, broken PCIe lanes I think that's the problem actually. I wanted to use my 2600X and not my uh, 3500X. I'm going to also make a video about this processor right here and another processor that I have which have quite interesting behavior and teach a very important lesson about test equipment. I'm going to swap out the CPUs and I'm going to see you after this is done. Now we are back. I have four DIMMs of RAM right here. I have an NVMe SSD, I have the 2600X right here, and now we're going to start this up. And let's take the postcard as well, so you might be able to see those. Let's take pin 1. Now you can see the postcard. I'm going to push the power button. Postcards are going to start to run. Cooler now even turns. So let's see. 7 amps. Wow, that's a lot of current. <laughs> That's almost my power supply maxed out. This is quite some pro problem that I sometimes have, especially when I use an external GPU included. The amperage gets so high that my power supply goes into limit mode. 
Hmm, we still get a few beeps. Interesting. Those were five again. So that means there's probably still a, an issue with our first PCIe slot. Let's see now. Let's double check. We're going to move our graphics card into the lower slot. We're going to see if this gives us a post or not. If this gives us a post, there's probably actually something wrong with our PCIe slot or the way that the first PCIe slot is connected to the CPU. Um, this could be physical damage on the board for some traces. This could be capacitors being dead and these also there's like rectangular chips. Interesting. Same fault again. What I'm going to try to do is we're going to take less RAM because the RAM could be a problem. I think some of the slots might be dirty. I'm going to change out the dims. Going to try with just one in there. Because I want to confirm now that this 2600X that we now put in uh, is working in this board. So we now have to go back to square one. We have a single, going to use a single dim of RAM. Going to put it in the very last slot right here. And we now want to get, we want to confirm if this board even works with this processor in it and with the NVM connected. Because you always need to isolate problems when fixing motherboards. Because right now, I changed multiple things at once, which is a bad thing, but I don't, uh, which leads me to not knowing where, where, where within the problem lies. So I'm try now trying to isolate again. I have only a single stick of RAM. I have the CPU and the graphics card. And as you can see, we already have picture. That's a good sign because with this, now we know the CPU works in here, the lower slot works, and in this slot at least we did get a picture with the RAM. What we're now going to do is we're going to see if the first PCIe slot works, because that was the big thing that we wanted to see. Because now we only changed a single thing, we only changed the position of the graphics card, not of the RAM, not of the CPU. Now it's very important to see if we're going to have a picture out of this this slot from the main board of the PCA slot and this is going to tell us a lot if the slot works or not and if we have an issue with the RAM. We seem to have the, an issue with the PCIe card because we now didn't get a post again. So what I'm going to try now is I'm going to take out the GPU. I'm going to be putting some IPA onto these fingers and I'm going to plug it in and out multiple times. And I will see you again when, I, when I've done that. So, now the slot is hopefully clean. And let's see if we actually have a problem or if we just had a dirty PCIe slot. What I would expect if the PCIe slot now doesn't work is to be any physical damage to the pins of the PCIe slot. Because there's a lot of pins under there as you probably know. And they could have lost contact because of a heavy GPU, wrong mounting, wrong disassembly, wrong assembly, a lot of reasons. And we still get that post uh, post beep. So we're going to turn off again. And one more thing that I want to try, just to be very sure, is we're going to take a, uh, another GPU. Let's see if we're going to post now. If not, we are first going to take a look at the back side of the board. And then on the top side, there's also some data lines that are connected to the slot to make it work in um, like X16. As you can hear, still the same problem. And now what we're going to do, we're going to partially disassemble it and we're going to take a look at the slot. So, we are back right now. And if you have good eyes, you can see what I found right here. Someone has knocked the resistor off. I was looking at the PCIe slot. I was having um, a look if there's any physical damage or anything obvious to see. I tried to take a look at the pins at the bottom, at the capacitors that are always connected with the PCIe slot. And then I traced 
the traces up to the front to the PCIe and I saw this and if you still haven't spotted it right there there's a resistor that is knocked away from its pads this resistor might actually be bad now I sadly can't tell we're going to need to try to solder it back but it could very well be possible that the bottom side of the capacitor is b broken in a way where it wouldn't take any solder anymore but we're going to try to find this out probably not going to talk while I'm soldering um, yeah we're going to try to do it probably there's going to be a voiceover and see you then or hear you then or whatever bye yeah and here's the quick voiceover right now we can see me applying for some flux and now you can see me struggle with this resistor there's the capacitor quite close to it to the right and I'm trying to get it connected to the pad again and there's some leftover off the uh, off the resistor onto the pad that I had to clean up and now with the hot air I'm trying to get it back into its place that it's going to be connected on both sides again the resistor is now soldered back into place but I gotta say the resistor looks awful there's a big part of it broken away it seemed to have actually soldered onto the board but I wouldn't be so sure if this actually works. I'm going to add a little bit more solder onto the bottom side of it because it looks like it's just laying in the solder, not actually is soldered. So we're going to take some solder, going to heat this up, try to make a bigger blob, but there's such a big part of the resistor missing. I don't think that it's actually connecting to anything anymore. Already got solder onto the other onto the other component right there. We're going to see if this actually works like this. Uh, I'm probably not going to film it, it's probably not going to work and I will have to find out what kind of value this resistor has. Maybe even we can still measure this one but I will get back to you as soon as I have more information. Right now we got the board back built up with the resistor looking very dodgy but we're going to see if anything has changed if this has worked or not. We got everything hooked up as before. We got a 2600X. We got one stick of RAM. We have our RX460 in the first PCIe slot. And we have picture. This is insane. That resistor actually still got soldered onto there. Means there's enough uh, contact there. And we have picture now from our first PCIe slot. This is very weird. Because the thing is, this, um, the customer said that this board from one day to the next day stopped working. And this looks kind of weird to me because this doesn't look like a problem that would ha uh, occur naturally. What could be the case is that the BIOS got stuck in any way or the battery had a problem with the 2.92 volts that we saw before. And then he tried to disassemble it and then knocked off knock the resistor off but what I would most likely expect is that he wanted to change something about maybe the graphics card maybe the cooler and in the process has knocked off that resistor something like that has prob uh, probably happened still on our on a BIOS screen right now on the post screen this is weird I'm going to connect a proper cooler to this going to um, build this up going to have a display output for this for myself hook up a keyboard and try to get into windows i wanted to now wrap up this video show you how i test the main bots as you can see we have four sticks of ram for a total of 20 gigabytes we have ethernet connected we have some usb connected i tested the first and the last pcie slot with different graphics cards I tested the speaker and I tested the NVMe slots. As you can see, there's an NVMe SSD M.2 in there. And also I'm using a SSD that is connected here to SATA. I'm not testing every single USB port. I'm not testing all the audio because I have no reason to. I'm not testing all the RGB headers and everything else there is or every single fan header. 
I'm not testing that only if I have a reason to do so. And as you can see, we already posted right now. I want to quickly show you that it is seeing the SSD. And right now, you can see we have two disks that are recognized number zero and number one, both 120 gigabytes. The upper one is the SATA SSD, where our system is on, and the lower one is the NVMe, where currently nothing is stored on. So, this board is fully fixed. The problem was physical damage. I'm not too sure if it was only the physical damage when why the customer gave this to me, or if there was something else, a stuck BIOS or anything, that he had a no boot and then when disassembling did that. Because he said it turned off while being in normal use and never turned on again. But who knows? That is only his story. We got this fixed. We knocked off resistor. I flashed a BIOS on the spot. So we have the newest BIOS on here. And thank you very much for watching. Subscribe please. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. And I would love to see you in the next one. And have a good one. Bye. <laughs>